That's a good cow. William Porchick awoke from his reverie on the milking stool and looked around the meadow, his hands still working the beast's teeth. There was a black pointy hat rising over the hedge. He gave such a start that he started to milk into his left boot. Gives plenty of milk, does she? Uh, yes, Mistress Weatherwax, William quavered. That's good. Long may she continue to do so, that's what I say. Good day to you. And the pointy hat continued up the lane. Porchick stared after it. He grabbed the bucket and, squelching at every other step, hurried into the barn and yelled for his son, Rummage, you get down here right now. His son appeared at the hayloft, pitchfork still in his hand. What's up, Dad? You take Daphne down to the market right now, you understand? What? Dad, she's our best milker. Was, son, was. Granny Weatherwax just put a curse on her. Sell her now before her horns drop off. What'd she say, Dad? She said, she said, long may she continue to give milk. And Porchick hesitated. That doesn't sound like a curse, Dad, said Rummage. I mean... Not your general curse. Sounds a bit hopeful, really, said his son. Well, it was, you had to hear, it was the way she said it. What sort of way, Dad? Like, cheerfully. Are you all right, Dad? It was the way, <sighs> Porchick paused. Well, it's not right, he continued. It's not right. She's got no right to go around being cheerful at people. She's never cheerful. My boot is full of milk. Nanny Og was taking some time out to tend her secret still in the woods. As a still, it was the best kept secret there could be, since everyone in the kingdom knew exactly where it was, and any secret kept by so many people must be a very good secret indeed. Even the king knew, and he knew enough to pretend he didn't know, and that meant he didn't have to ask her for any taxes, and she didn't have to refuse. And every year, at Hogswatch, he got a barrel of what honey might be if only bees weren't teetotalers. And everyone understood the situation. No one had to pay any money, and so, in a small way, the world was a happier place. And no one was cursed until their teeth fell out. Nanny was dozing. Keeping an eye on the still was a day and night job, but finally the sound of people repeatedly calling her name got too much for her. No one would come into the clearing, of course. That would mean admitting that they knew where it was. So they were blundering around, blundering around in the surrounding bushes. She pushed her way through and was greeted with some looks of feigned surprise that would have done credit to any amateur dramatic company. Uh, what do you want? she demanded. Uh, uh, Mrs. Og, we thought you you might be taking a walk in the woods, said M M poor chick while a scent that could clean glass wafted on the breeze. You gotta do something. It's Mistress Weatherwax. Oh, is she done? You tell her, Mr. Hampvicker. The man next to Porchick took off his hat quickly and held it respectively in front of him in the uh, a la Senior Banditos have raided our village position. Well, ma'am, uh, me and my lad, we're, we're digging for a well, and she come past. Granny Weatherwax? Y yes, am she said. Uh, uh, she said, y "You won't find any water there, my good man. You'd, you'd, be, you'd, you'd be better looking in the hollow by the chestnut tree." And we dug down anyway, and we never found no water. Nanny lit her pipe. She didn't smoke around the still since that time when a careless spark had sent the barrel she was sitting on a hundred yards into the air. She had been lucky; a fir tree had broken her fall. So. Uh, then you dug in the hollow by the chestnut tree, she said mildly, and Hampiger looked shocked. N no, there's no telling what she wanted us to find there. And she cursed my cow, said poor Chick. Oh, really? What, what'd she say? She said, may she give a lot of milk. And poor Chick stopped. Once again, now that he came to say it out loud, well, it was the way she said it, he added. Oh, and what kind of way was that? Nicely. Nice? Smiling and everything. I don't dare drink the stuff now. Nanny was mystified. I can't quite see the problem. You tell that to Mr. Hopcroft's dog, said Porchick. Hopcroft daren't leave the poor thing on account of her. The whole family's gone mad. There's him shearing, his wife sharpening the scissors, and the two lads out all the time looking for fresh places to dump the hair. Patient questioning on Nanny's part eludicated the role that the hair restorer had played in this. Oh, and he gave it 
to half the bottle, Mrs. Ogg. Even though Esme writes, I'll write small spoonful once a week on the label, and even then you need to wear roomy trousers. He said he was so nervous, Mrs. Ogg. I mean, what's she playing at? Our wives are keeping the kids indoors. I mean, supposing she smiled at them? Well, she's a witch. Oh, so am I, and I smiles at them, said Nanny Ogg. There's always running after me for sweets. Yeah, but you're, I mean, she, I mean, you don't, uh, I mean, well. And she's a good woman, said Nanny. Common sense prompted her, prompted her to add, in her own way. I expect there's water down in the hollow, and Portrick's cow will give good milk, and if Hopcroft won't read the labels on bottles, then he deserves a head that you can see your face in. And if you think Esme Weatherwax curse kids, well, you got the sense of an earthworm. She cuss em, yeah, all day long, but not curse em. Oh, she don't aim that low. Yeah, yeah, Portrick almost moaned, but it don't feel right. That's what I'm saying. Her going around being nice. Man don't know if he's got a leg to stand on. Or hop on, said Hampicker darkly. Oh, all right. I'll see about it. People should go around not doing what you expect, said Portrait Quickly. It gets people on edge. Yeah, we'll keep an eye out on your still, uh, Hamper said, and then staggered backwards, grasping his stomach and wheezing. Oh, don't mind him. It's, it's distress, said Mr. Portrait, rubbing his elbow. Y you been picking herbs, Miss Hogg? Oh, uh, that's right, said Nanny, hurrying her way across the leaves. So shall I put out the fire for you then? Portrick shouted. Granny was sitting outside her house when Nanny Ogg hurried up the path. She was sorting through a sack of old clothes. Elderly garments were scattered around her, and she was humming. Nanny Ogg started to worry. The Granny Weatherwax she knew did not approve of music, and she smiled when she saw Nanny. Or at least the corners of her mouth turned up. That was really worrying. Granny normally only smiled if something bad was happening to someone deserving. Oh, why, Gaitha, how nice to see you. Are you all right, Esme? Hmm? Never felt better, dear. <laughs> uh, sortin' old rags, are ya? said Nanny. Gonna make that quilt? It was one of Granny Weatherwax's firm beliefs that one day she'd make a patchwork quilt. However, it is a task that requires patience, and hence, in fifteen years, she got as far as three patches. But she collected old clothes anyway. A lot of witches did. It was a witch thing. Old clothes had personality, like old houses. When it came to clothes with a bit of wear lift in them, a witch had no pride at all. Ah, oh, it's in here somewhere, Granny mumbled. Aha! Here we are! She flourished a garment. It was basically pink. Knew it was here. Hardly worn, either. And about my size. You're going to wear it, said Nanny. Granny's piercing cut-you-off-at-the-knees gaze was turned upon her. Nanny would have been relieved at a reply like, No, I'm going to eat it, you dummy. Instead, her friend, friend relaxed and said, a little concerned, Huh, you don't think it'd suit me? There was lace around the collar. Nanny swallowed. Oh, you usually wear black. Uh, well, a bit more than usually. More like all the time. Hmm? Yeah, all the time. And very sad sight, I look too, said Granny robustly. It's about time I brighten myself off a bit, don't you think? It is so very pink. Granny put it aside into Nanny's horror, took her by the hand, and said it earnestly. And you know, I reckon I've been far too dog in the manger about this trials business, Skytha. Or oh, bitch in the manger, said Nanny Og absent mindedly. For a moment, Granny's eyes became two sapphires again. What? Oh, you'd be a bitch in the manger, Nanny mumbled, not a dog. Ah, oh yes, thank you for pointing that out. Well, I thought it's time I stepped back a bit and went along and cheered on the younger folks. I mean, I have to say, I really haven't been very nice to people, I have. Uh, I've tried being nice, Granny went on. It turned out like, like I expected. It didn't turn out like I expected, I'm sorry to say. Uh, you've never really been good at nice, said Nanny. Granny smiled. Hard though she stared, Nanny was unable to spot anything other than earnest concern. Perhaps I'll get better with practice. She patted Nanny's hand, and Nanny stared at her, at her 
hand as though something horrible had happened to it.